Hi there, I'm Nick Baker and I'm here to do some Qigong or movements with you. Qigong just basically means gas work. We're playing with gases like nitric oxide, hydrogen sulfide, amongst a lot of other aspects of the body from the endocrine and lymphatic to digestion, etc. Now with this, we're going after what we might call gut dysbiosis. What is it? Basically, it means that, that three pounds or so of gut bacteria, you've got this, you know, pretty complicated ecosystem within you, of things that are both uh, using you as a home and helping you out, living in a symbiotic relationship. You may have things that are trying to invade, and you have things that are just trying to hitch a ride. And uh, many of these things live in the gut. Now, what happens though is they're doing all kinds of things in there, like they're eating compounds, they're spitting out other compounds and gases, not unlike the process of making cheese or beer, uh, you know, even sourdough bread. And that gut bacteria ideally should protect you from a lot of things and help you digest. But what happens when this whole ecosystem goes awry? And this might be something as simple as kind of the global warming effect of your body or slowing of digestion, but also it's very common with any kind of chronic pain and inflammation the liver and the spleen and digestive system, they all kind of work together. So let's say your liver's really angry for other reasons, like chronic pain, then your gut is going to slow down and you, that's one of the reasons why you tend to see a lot of irritable bowel syndrome type effects in chronic pain conditions, such as fibromyalgia. So for this stage, three movements for you. And again, first, let's start with the breathing. Here, your diaphragm rests right below your lungs, and as you breathe, it's going up and down. It's a big old muscle. Now, most of us breathe maybe 30 to 40% in on average, and if you're in pain, it might be less than that. So, we want to use this as a tool to get full oxygen saturation. So, we're going to imagine that our lungs are in our belly. As we breathe in, it's not getting stuck in the chest. It's actually going to go all the way down. And here you can even practice by just having your hands on your belly as you breathe in, nice and slow. It, you can extend all the way down here. And as you breathe out, it'll come from the belly on up and out. And for this, I want you to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. So for this one, three movements we're going to pair with this breathing style. Okay? Now the first one is one of the most versatile tools. Uh, and it's simply called stomach massage. So you're going to take your hands, and you're going to stack them together, both palms, and you're going to place them on your abdomen. Now here, you're going to start rubbing around in a nice big circle. Again, this is very easy to do while sitting down or standing up, or sometimes even laying down, of course, if you're having a bad day, a flare-up. And sometimes this, this one conjures images in my head of like a, I ate too much at Thanksgiving. I just want to rub my belly and hold it. Or perhaps a time when I was sick, I had a tummy ache as a little kid, and my mother would sit there and rub my belly to make it feel better. All right? So these are instincts we already have. We're just using these as tools. Now here, as we go all the way around, you can add a little bit of pressure. You know, listen to your body and what's okay. But of course, you can add as much pressure as you want to make yourself go oomph even and start really massaging in there in a nice big circle. As you do this, get that abdominal breathing going and then we're, well, basically massaging not only from the outside with the hands, but from the inside with that diaphragm. And we're moving out stagnant gases, we're bringing a lot of blood flow down through this area which will kick the whole lymphatic system into gear helping massage and regulate peristalsis, which is that smooth muscle flow that pushes food through your intestinal tract, and doing quite a bit of things. And as you're doing this, you might think, well, which direction should I start in? Left or right or what? And, and really, honestly, it doesn't matter too much. What you're going to do is you're going to go both directions equally. Now, I'm going to step back here, and you can see also is that if you're standing, you can also start getting the rest of your body into it, meaning you can actually relax your hips and allow them to turn and even shift weight from one leg to the other. This 
we're going to start engaging all these little stabilizer muscles as we do it. It just adds a little extra effect. But the most important parts are starting off first with that nice hand motion moving around the gut and that nice deep abdominal breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Right? Like you're deflating yourself. Now I'm going to switch directions here. Right? On average, if you need a number to kind of focus on, think, okay, each time you do it, say 36 times one way and 36 times the opposite way. All right? And frequently enough that you start burping right away. Now, that might be a side effect for you. Like I said, we're moving a lot of stagnant gases. Now think, all those gut bacteria inside you, I said they're spitting out gases. This is important because they're pretty much carbonating you. And they're trying to stake their own territory out. They're terraforming you. So here, this is your way to terraform your world back. We're not trying to kill a bunch of bacteria, we're trying to adjust the environment. So the ones that we want, they're going to stay. And the ones we don't want, they're going to find a better home. And you may start feeling your belly getting nice and warm around now. Maybe even your hands will get a little sweaty. That's all okay. In fact, it's great. So here, this tool, do it a whole bunch. Again, this is stomach massage. Okay, now, second movement. This one, uh, sometimes we call this or refer to this as five element breathing or five phase breathing. Doesn't matter the name. I think of pushing up and down, okay? This is something you can easily do while sitting down. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see me. Um, start with your hands here like you're about to high five yourself. And as you go, one hand's going to go up and the other hand descends down. Here, notice my fingers are turned inwards like I'm holding the ceiling up. And the other one's down, the fingers forward. It's like I'm pushing myself up off of something. And I'm going to bring those hands together in the middle and switch going up and down. Now this will feel like a nice little stretch as well, but don't, don't try to accentuate it too much. Keep your spine nice and straight. And the breathing to go with this is, as you breathe in, you come to center. As you breathe out, you're pushing outwards, up and down in this case. So breathe in to come in, breathe out to go out. Again, using that abdominal breathing, coming in nice and deep through the nose and breathing out through the mouth. I'm going to do it sideways. You can see here as well. Now as I'm breathing in and breathing out, my back is nice and straight. My butt's not sticking out. So you want it tucked under. You're going to create this nice big kind of suction effect throughout this whole thoracic chamber, which happens to house all of your guts, your whole digestive system. So here we're really just kind of working it out and getting everything moving, moving quite a lot of blood flow through the middle of your body. Good. And this one also, if you like, you can really even go really low with it if you want. You'll start feeling slightly different effects as you bend your legs more. Uh, all of it is good. Uh, and if you want, well, for this next movement you'll see one kind of variation. But as a third movement that I think would be great for you to use. So again, this one is, uh, we'll just say, pushing up and pushing down, or five-phase breathing. Okay, third movement. Now this one does involve some twisting. So if you have any spinal issues or twisting is not okay for your body, don't worry about this one for now. Uh, you can use the other two to great effect. Otherwise, what we'll be doing here is I want you to have a nice straight back. Now this does mean that your hips are tucked just slightly under. Don't let your butt stick out. Ideally you want a straight line essentially from your tailbone up through the top of your head. And just kind of hanging like marionette puppets straight. For this one, we're going to do a nice slow turn. Moving all the way around like so. And then coming all the way back. You notice with my hands, one's just kind of pushing in front. The other one's going all the way behind. And it's going all the way, essentially, to my opposite kidney. The breathing for this is as you come to center, you breathe in. As you turn, I want you to breathe out. 
Breathing in to center, breathing out to turn. While this one is difficult in a chair with a back, you can definitely do it in a chair like a stool that doesn't have a back if you need to sit down. It'll feel like the spine is almost ringing out a little bit. And really you feel it massaging everything in the middle. Really you're twisting your waist back and forth. So this can be a very good and useful tool for you. Uh, and all of these movements also should be noted in particular if you're in this gut dysbiosis stage, you might be finding yourself having these heavy pains, like joint pains, the heavy head feeling like you have a head cold, uh, but particularly a lot of irritable bowel syndrome issues or general digestive issues, um, and also allergies that pop up. Like you may have gotten allergies all of a sudden, whether it be food or environmental. Essentially, these can all be connected back at some point to a lot of gut bacteria. So that being said, one of the primary things besides movements for this stage is dietary. I'm not saying you have to live by these rules forever. In fact, ideally not. But a couple things just to be careful and avoid are ice cold foods like ice water. Stick to warm water or even room temperature water is okay. Um, avoid large, large meals and late night meals and irregular meals. And stick to things that are easy to digest. So the idea being you want to kind of warm your gut early in the morning, like ginger tea is kind of a nice thing if you can handle ginger, uh, or just something kind of a little spicy and warming, even something with black pepper on it'll help. And uh, gradually, you know, toning down the meals throughout the day. So your largest meals at breakfast and smallest meal is closer to dinner. And, and try to avoid eating right before bed. Let everything close up shop before you go to bed so all the blood can actually go where it needs to go. And this should also improve your sleep quite a bit at some point. So a few guidelines for you. And uh, with this, these three movements, again, treat them, uh, take them like a pill, three times a day, maybe in small doses, like five to 10 minutes, should be able to get you through these no problem. And uh, small, frequent doses, this is gonna have a better effect on your body than many other things. Uh, and plus, mentally, it's a lot easier to handle than saying, well, I'm gonna sit down for an hour uh, I know I, even I'd make excuses for that. So it's much easier to say, hey, I can do a bite-sized chunk of this frequently, and that way everything that's affecting me between treatments, you know, hey, it has less effect because I'm getting a tune-up regularly, and the body will learn, and it's very trainable. So again, I'm Nick Baker, and this is uh, our gut dysbiosis stage, movements to assist in digestion.